Honorable Deputy Speaker. Honorable Members, when you open our daily newspapers in the morning, one might think that Namibia is the latest heaven. There is not a single day that passes without having to read or hear that a woman, a child, a grandmother, a man or even a newly born baby got raped. This has become our daily reality and the statistics do not lie. The Namibian police recorded 3,164 rape cases between 2016 and 2019 only. This translates into 1,054 rape incidents per year and about three rape incidents per day. These are but just an official numbers. It is common cause that rape in this, rape is one of the most underreported crime in the media mostly due to the social taboo and victimization that rape victims have to endure. In fact, the Namibian police in 2015 reported that a shocking 79% of rape incidents still go unreported. Based on these figures, one will not, one will not be exaggerating to label, to label rape as a pandemic in Namibia. We must confront this reality on our remember. We have a rape problem in the media. And it has of late been manifesting itself through its most ugly and violent forms. In particular, our women and children are under siege by these rapists. Rapists in this country have declared war against our mothers, sisters, little sisters, and even our little brothers. Honorable members, much more needs to be done to ensure that we protect those who are most likely to become victims of sexual crime. One of the most effective mechanisms that has proven to mitigate sexual crime in countries such as Israel, New Zealand and Australia is the creation of sex, a sex offender register. Honorable members, in simple terms, a sex offender register is a system set up to assist government and law enforcement to keep track of what convicted offenders of sexual crimes are up to. This includes both those who are serving their sentences in police, I mean in prison, and those who have served their sentences and are now integrated into society. A sex offender register helps to aid law enforcement with an eagle's eye of a potential danger that may be posed from those who have been convicted of crimes of sexual nature and it makes it much more easier for police to detect would-be real offenders. Furthermore, a sex offender register helps in alerting members of a particular community when they are in potential danger and makes them more aware of their surroundings. The creation of a sex offender register is further necessitated by the fact that once a sex offender has served his or her sentence, they go undercover and off the radar of law enforcement. This is a catastrophic status quo for one fundamental reason. Psychology tells us that sexual crime is a highly mental crime. This means that sex offenders are much more likely to re-offend than any other group of offenders. Honorable members, it is because of this very reason why sex offenders should not be let off the radar after they have served their sentences. They should rather, honorable members, be registered under a comprehensive sex offender register that will have a set of conditions as to how they should handle their interaction with the public in the future, and in particular, the interaction with women and other vulnerable people in society who are likely to fall victims of rape. So much noise. Is there somebody who wants to raise a point of order?
Look, when I hear somebody standing up and saying it's it's not wearing a mask, honorable. Look, when I hear somebody standing up and saying it's 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 yeah, proceed. No, there's somebody that wants to say something. Proceed. Yeah, Indeed, proceed. honorable members, we are aware that this August House passed a piece of legislation in 2015 called the Child Care and Protection Act of 2015. This act, honorable members, to a fair extent tries to put in place mechanisms to ensure that offenders who have been convicted of, of number of specified offenses in the act may not be employed to work directly with children at an institution which provides welfare services to children if they have been convicted of any of a list specified offenses. The act further provides that any person seeking employment in areas that involve working with children must provide their prospective employers with the police clearance certificate certifying that they have not been convicted of murder, rape, incident assault, and other sexual offenses, serious physical assault, kidnapping or abduction, and crimes relating to pornography or human trafficking within the last 10 years. The Act goes on to specify that an employer who hires a person that has been convicted of the same offenses listed in the Act is deemed to have committed a crime and is liable to be prosecuted. The penalty if convicted is a fine of up to 20,000 or an imprisonment for up, for up to five years or both. To aid employers, the Act mandates that the Ministry of Gender Equality and Child Welfare is required to designate a registrar who will record the names of persons who are convicted of the specified offenses. The Child Care and Protection Act of 2015 seems to be a comprehensive and a tight piece of legislation, but its implementation has been nothing but slow and sluggish. There is a very low level of adherence to the protective measures that are put in place in the Act to protect would-be pretenders from becoming employed in, ed in, in educational institutions such as schools. Hence, predators are still hanging out around children, and our children continue to be in imminent danger of being sexually harassed by sexual offenders who ought to be red flagged in terms of the Child Care and Protection Act of 2015. Furthermore, honorable members, the Ministry of Gender Equality and Child Welfare does still not have a comprehensive register of offenders of crime listed in the Act to assist employers from hiring, to assist employers from hiring potential offenders. The whole Act was therefore implemented in a skewed manner and does not serve its purpose of protecting our children from predators. The Act also addresses, the Act also only addresses the need to protect children from potential harm. Honorable members, we need a much more broader piece of protective mechanism to protect society from rape. Yes. Women, children, and even men are increasingly becoming victims of rape in recent years. Yes. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, it is for this reason why the creation of a national sex offender register is so important. Yes. As outlined earlier, a sex offender register plays three key roles in keeping communities safe. One, it aids law enforcement in terms of investigation and quickly establishing a suspect's history. Two, it provides community with the right to know where the sex offenders are, why, where they live, and what they do for a living. And three, it is a deterrent from potential would-be real offender of sexual crime. Hence, the importance of sex offender register cannot be understated. Honorable members, it is no longer just a convenience. It is now an absolute necessity. Yes. Yes. Honorable Deputy Speaker, this August House will be failing in its duty to protect the most vulnerable members of society if we do not consider this motion with the utmost seriousness it deserves. 
We, the PDM members of Parliament, propose that a sex offender register in the Namibian context be implemented in the following manner. One, a comprehensive register of all sexual offenders has to be developed and updated constantly by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security as a ministry in charge of law enforcement in the country. Two, this register has to be shared with all government institutions as well as all employers in the public and private sector. Three, this register must also be digitalized and be accessible through a platform run by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security. This will enable members of the public to know where convicted sexual offenders are, where they reside, and where they are employed. All convicted sexual offenders who have served their full sentences and have been released must be on a registered sexual offenders database for a period ranging from 15 to 50 years, depending on the severity of their sexual offense they have committed and likelihood to reoffend. Honorable members, this is not a punishment towards sex offenders, but it's rather a mechanism that when put in place will keep our citizens safe from sexual predators. Deputy Speaker, I move that this motion be referred to the relevant parliamentary standing committee for further deliberation and scrutiny. Yeah. I thank you.